Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. I'm speaking to you tonight from Pedriasi Lodge after having just completed the last cabinet retreat of government for this year. And I thank you for allowing me into your homes once again. It is a little over seven months ago since I started providing updates on the measures government was putting in place in response to the novel coronavirus disease. I've provided so far 17 updates which have demonstrated the coordinated approach we initiated towards winning the battle against the pandemic. We can safely say that the benefits are showing. During my last update a month ago, we had a total of 507 active cases, 45,258 persons had recovered, and 297 persons had unfortunately died. As of Friday, 16th October, the number of active cases has declined further to 398, with 46,000 664 persons fully recovered from the virus, putting our recovery rate at 98.5%. 13 more deaths have occurred, bringing the total number of deaths tragically to 310, out of a total number of 510,074 persons tested. The rate of death 0.5% continues to remain very low. When you take a close look at the measures some other countries are having to take, including imposing nighttime curfews and partial lockdowns, declaring state of emergencies, limiting the numbers of people permitted at public gatherings, and mandatorily fining persons for not wearing masks, all in the bed to contain the second wave of the virus, we in Ghana have been spared all these developments and restrictions. We must thus be doing something right. In fact, our favorable situation at the moment is thanks to the effectiveness of government policies, the cooperation of you, the Ghanaian people, and ultimately to the grace of God. The science and data tells us that the trajectory of the virus in Ghana mirrors that of an epidemic with reduced disease activity. Our daily infection rates are no longer in the hundreds as they were some time back. Presently, they are in the tens, averaging 25 new cases per day in the course of last week. This is in sharp contrast with what is happening in the countries that are experiencing a second wave of infections, where in some instances, new infections and hospitalizations are sadly in the thousands per day. In spite of our successes, I'd like to reiterate that this virus remains something of a mystery, and we should always rather err on the side of caution and continue to observe the protocols that have brought us to where we are. As President of the Republic, I assured you of my continuing commitment to limiting and stopping the importation of the virus, containing its spread, providing adequate care for the sick, slowing down community spread, reducing the impact of the virus on social and economic life, and using the opportunity afforded by this pandemic to expand our domestic production capacity and deepen our self-reliance. I remain committed to these objectives, and I will not stray from them. Fellow Ghanaians, we all know that the emergence of the virus on our shores came from abroad necessitating the closure of our borders by land, air, and sea in March 
2020. Following the provision of testing facilities, which ensure the speed and accuracy of COVID-19 testing, Kotoka International Airport was reopened on 1st September 2020. It has been six weeks since the reopening, and a total of 30,564 pass passengers have been tested, from which 92 have tested positive. All 92 are asymptomatic cases whose status, but for the test, would not have been detected and would have spread the disease amongst the rest of the population. I'm aware that some are calling for government to extend the PCR negative test period before boarding the flight from three days to at least five days. I believe in the context of the second wave of infections that is engulfing so many countries of Europe and America that we have to insist on the three-day period. It is better to be safe than sorry. Indeed, across the country, government has seen to the expansion of COVID-19 testing facilities from the initial two to 16, which include those of private sector providers. Additionally, some hospitals across the country have been equipped with the capacity to test for COVID-19. We now have more dedicated treatment facilities for dealing with the disease and have also improved considerably the availability of PPEs for our health workers. It is reassuring that we no longer have news of shortages or lack of PPEs. Through a public-private partnership, our nation is the beneficiary of a 100-bed infectious diseases center located at the Ga East Municipal Hospital with plans in the offing to replicate it in Kumasi, Takradi, and Tamale. Inasmuch as we currently have no patients at the isolation centers, I express the gratitude of the nation once again to private and religious bodies who provided their facilities to support the fight. These laudable efforts have manifested the collective will of the majority of Ghanaians to rally together, irrespective of ethnic, religious or partisan political considerations to help win this fight. It is important for me to stress that the cost of providing for the care of most persons stricken with the virus is being borne by government, ensuring that persons who tested positive and were in need of health care received it promptly. The strategic controlled, progressive, safe easing of restrictions continues, with its overarching ob objective being to restore our lives and economy back to normal. SHS2 and JHS2 students are back in school, as are some students in tertiary institutions and colleges. Indeed, the academic year for new and continuing university students will commence from January 2021. Football, the passion of the nation, will return in two weeks. Private burials, still with a maximum of 100 persons, are being performed. And the limit on the numbers of persons who can attend conferences, workshops, and award events has been lifted subject to the strict adherence of COVID-19 protocols. On the economic front, according to the Bank of Ghana, the Ghanaian economy is recovering faster than initially anticipated. Consumer confidence is bank bouncing back strongly and is today above pre-lockdown levels. Business confidence has also increased reflecting the improving macroeconomic conditions, stability of the exchange rate, lower input prices, moderation in lending rates, and positive industry prospects. Consumer spending, industrial consumption of electricity, and construction activities have all reached pre-lockdown levels, 
whilst tourist arrivals and port harbor activity are gradually edging upwards. So I urge all of you, my fellow Ghanaians, to continue to comply with the strict hygiene, mask wearing, and social distancing protocols that have become part of our daily routines. This is the surest way by which we can defeat the virus and avoid a second wave of infections. The outlook on our battle against COVID-19 remains optimistic, for which we thank God and you, the Ghanaian people. It is important that we maintain this positive position, especially with a few weeks to the holding of the December 7th presidential and parliamentary elections. And we are in Shishaya, Ayaye Efa Yariano, Unyankupo Adaruma, Eye Juma, Nenso, Yariano Daso Oho, Inti Mesremu, Titru, Mufrifia, Munkoso Enche Masno, Na Mundi Muhuni, Neno, Nebe Boyen, Aboyen Hubay, Na Mayen, Kwain, Apam Yariano, Kra Ifriye Memo. Anye Mime, Bejiano, ni woto ke ha hilane ni modromo na echuni ti hela eyako ni wo titu ke wo shishi ha wo wo mask ni wo hie wo he fale fale no ni wo ke ba sa hilane ko ni wo ha hilane aje won thing kura i have said before let us continue to look out for one another and remain each other's keeper. And I'm confident that by so doing, we will emerge victorious in the fight against COVID-19. Zero active cases must be the goal. And I have no doubt that together and with the help of God, this too shall pass, for the battle is still the Lord's. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. Thank you for your attention and good night.